Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another fresh and interesting new topic that is integration. And what we are going to learn first in this main topic integration is how to find the, the integral of a general polynomial function. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student will be able to find the, the integral of a general polynomial function. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So my dear student in your favorite segment of the lesson today, I'm happy to give you another special sequence of numbers. And this sequence of numbers is called uh, Lucas sequence. I will explain what is this Lucas sequence after completing my lesson today. So don't go away. <laughs> to begin the lesson, my dear student, let us first learn the relationship between integral and the derivative of a function. So to do that, let's have a look at a general function y equals to f of x. If you have this as a function of x, dy by dx, that is the derivative of this very function y, which we usually denoted by this y prime. This y prime is the derivative of this function y. Then the integral of the function y prime, which is usually denoted by this symbol, look at the symbol of integration. It is just like a stretched letter S. So integral of y prime dx, that is with respect to x. This integral now gives back the original function y. That is, if you find the integral of the derivative of the function y, what you are getting is the function back. So thus, integral of the y prime dx, the result is now going to be y which means y is now the integral of the y prime. And y, remember, is the original function, while y prime is the derivative of the function y, which means integral of derivative will give you the function back. So this is the relationship between integral and derivative. So let us just move and learn how to find the integral of a function. So the rule for finding integral of a function is says, so suppose you have the general polynomial function y equals to ax raised to the power of n, where this is a function of x, and you wanted to find the integral of this function y. So what the rule tells us to do is says uh, the integral of y with respect to x, that is dx, which will now be equals to integral of ax raised to the power of n dx. I have replaced this y by ax raised to the power of n because here it says y equals to ax raised to the power of n. So the rule tells us what we need to do to find this integral of ax raised to the power of n. What we are to do to find this integral is says uh, this is equals to ax raised to the power of n plus 1 all over n plus 1 and then plus the constant number c. If you look at this uh, compared with what I have here, A is the coefficient here of this the term x raised to the power of n, while n is the power. So you can see the power in attempt to do the integration, the power will increase by 1. And that power increased by 1 is what we are going to use to divide that very term by that power after increasing it by 1. That is n plus 1. Then plus the constant of integration. This C, you must write it all the time. So this is the rule we now make use of to find the integral of any polynomial function. We are going to make use of this very rule shortly to take uh, or to solve or to find the integral of some functions. So let us just move and take examples. Example number one it says uh, find the integral of 3x squared dx. Solution to this very problem. What I will do first is to write down the rule so that I will be looking at it so that I will do it correctly. See, the rule for finding integral it says integral of ax raised to the power of n dx. It says it's equals to ax raised to the power of n plus 1 all over n plus 1 and then plus the constant of the integration c. So we continue. So this is the rule, which will now be just our guide in finding integral of this very function, 3x squared. So let me do that. 
So integral of 3x squared dx will now be equals to, so comparing this very function that I wanted to find it is integral, and the general function ax raised to the power of n. I can see that my letter a is now 3, and my n, that is the power, would now be 2. Then I will now make use of this to write the integral of this accurately. So this will now be equals to 3 x raised to the power of 2 plus 1. I have replaced n here by the number 2, replaced a by this number 3 all over n plus 1. So you now have 2 plus 1, and then plus the constant of the integration. I repeat this, you must write it all the time. Continue. So now add this uh, numbers, that is our power, that is 2 plus 1, it gives answer 3, and this 2 plus 1 also is 3, so you now have uh, uh, 3x raised to the power of 3 all over 3, then plus the c, which this 3 can now cancel this very 3, so in the end you now have uh, x raised to the power of 3 plus c, so this is the integral of this 3x square with respect to 2x. Let's just take one more example. Example number two it says you have to find the integral of x raised to the power of minus one over two dx. Solution to this very problem. As we are just starting, it's always good to write down the rule for finding integral. And the rule says uh, integral of ax raised to the power of n dx is equals to ax raised to the power of n plus one all over n plus 1, then plus the constant of the integration. This is the rule, which will always be used as a guide what to do to find the integral of whatever function asked to find. So I can now write uh, my function that is integral of x raised to the power of minus 1 over 2 dx. So in this case, letter a here is now the coefficient here, which is 1. And the n, the power, is now minus 1 over 2. Look at it. Then if I substitute in this very formula here, I'm going to have uh, x raised to the power of minus 1 over 2 plus 1. I have replaced n here by minus 1 over 2, then plus 1 all over n plus 1. You now have minus 1 over 2 plus 1, then plus the constant of the integration. So it is this now I'm going to simplify. So minus 1 over 2 plus uh, 1, that is minus half plus 1. The result is to be nothing but half. So I'm going to have uh, x raised to the power of my 1 over 2, positive 1 over 2, over 1 over 2, then plus the constant of that integration. And there I continue. So I'm dividing this x raised to half by a fraction. This fraction, look at it, 1 over 2 which I can always change that division to multiplication. So I'm going to have x raised to the power of 1 over 2 times, uh, instead of this division is now changed to multiplication. But what you do, remember, we now multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over 2, which will now be 2 over 1, then plus the constant of the integration. And there doing this multiplication gives you 2x raised to the power of 1 over 2 plus c. So this is the integral of this very function, x raised to the power of minus 1 over 2 with respect to x. My dear student, with the few examples given, I hope you'll be able to find the, the integral of a general polynomial function. This is where I'm going to stop in this very lesson today. Let me just move to the last segment to Marcy Safan and explain what is a Lucas sequence. So the Lucas sequence is a sequence of numbers starting with 2 and 1 as it is the first two terms. That is 2 is the very first term and 1 is the second term. And the other terms are simply obtained by addition of the last two terms. That is what you now do to find the, or to generate a Lucas sequence. Let's just have a look at the Lucas sequence. This is just the very first two terms. So I'm going to write the remaining terms here. You can see 2 is the very first term of the sequence while 1 is the second term. And as the rule implies, it says uh, to get the other terms, you simply find the sum of the last two terms. In this case, I'm adding 2 and 1 to get the term number 3. And addition of 2 and 1 gives me 3. So term number 3 will now be this number 3. 
to get a term number four, that is the fourth term, I'm going to add the last two terms. My last two terms here is one and three. Addition of one and three gives me four. So four will now be the fourth term. To get the fifth term, I'm adding the last two terms. Here, the last two terms will now be three and this four. So addition of three and four gives me seven. To get the next term, I'm going to add the last two terms, four and seven. That will give me 11. Next term, to get it is to add the last two terms, seven and 11. That will give answer 18. This is how we now generate the terms in the local sequence. If I believe if I ask you to write uh, the next term, you'll be able to do so. A simple addition of 11 or 18 to get answer 29. If I ask you next term also, I believe you'll be able to write it. That is addition of 18 and 29 to get this number 47. And so on, this is the local sequence. And this is how we now generate uh, the terms in that local sequence. This sequence has a lot, a lot of amazing properties, which we shall see in our subsequent lesson. Thank you for your attention, and we meet in our next lesson.